Hello everybody, it's Maureen. I hope everybody is well, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been doing while we have all been in sort of isolation. There we go. This is a design that's meant to look like black work embroidery. I had this design printed out and it's one that actually exists on Spoonflower, if you're familiar with the website. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I'm just giving you my sources. And with that, this is an embroidery I've been working on for about the past year. And I've had it in a couple different iterations. Specifically, the I've been carrying it in my bag, my sewing bag. I put a couple different projects in there. This is one I've been working on at least for well over a year. I printed out the fabric, it came in the mail. I only ordered, this piece is like 16 by 20. Um, so you're talking like half a yard or so, but keep in mind that at the website you can have different amounts printed. So what I did is the portions that are not embroidered yet, kind of appear like this, where they're very sort of light in color. The places that I've embroidered, you're gonna notice like down here, they're darker and a bit more textured. So my goal with this originally was to make it possibly into a coif for Renaissance wear, so to speak. And embroidered coifs were very much a, a gentry and middle class if you could afford it, sort of item from the, oh, I'd say 1550s forward. You see it in a lot of portraiture in England. So this is a practice more or less and an item that was kept in my bag. Let's see here, cause I'm working on a piece that's just off camera here. Move you a bit backwards, there we go. I have a magnifier light over here. See it? It's really, really shiny. Um, the magnifier light certainly does help when I am stitching. And normally I have it closer over my work, but you wouldn't see anything of me working on this if I had that light directly over my work. But you always wanna have a well-lighted spot to do your embroidery. Guilds, even back in the medieval period, specifically suggested using daylight and not embroidering by candlelight, which is something we modernly think of as being quite romantic, so to speak, and nostalgic, but that's very poor lighting for sewing and for embroidery. So the guilds were advised about not embroidering by candlelight. Plus, of course, tallow candles, which were the most common kind of candle you could get, were also created a lot of smoke, which means your embroidery wouldn't be very clean. And if you're doing this for, for money, which most people were, if they did, if they did it for themselves, you still wouldn't want it dirty. What I've been working on mainly is these vine pieces right here. Basically, there's I do an outer edge like this, and then there's tiny little hash marks on the insides, and then it creates a extra fuzzy texture. And from there, then I outline all the leaves, and then I fill all the leaves. Like this is one here that's completely filled with the embroidery. So is this one here. These other ones are outlined, but they don't have the fill, because you see how much darker these completed pieces are as compared to their outlined counterparts. They're even lighter when they're not even outlined. So what I'm using, just to kind of give you an idea, let me find my last stitch here. There we go. What I'm using tends to be just your standard 
needle, but I try to pick one that has a very narrow head to it. The smaller the eye and the opening, the less holes you're really creating in your embroidery and the smaller holes you're creating in your embroidery. So I have a silk, when I'm not using my tools, which I have my embroidery scissors, there's a thimble over here and some other, um, this is a pin sharpener with a little sand on the inside. When I'm not using my tools, I normally keep them in a little bent wood box. And in the bent wood box, besides the tools, I also have a whole ball of embroidery silk. I'm trying to find the end of it here. This is quite thin as far as that goes. It looks like it's like a two ply silk. And I use that doubled over to do the vines and the little hash marks and the outlines for the leaves. On the inside, I use it as a single strand to complete this area. And then I use a Guterman's silk. Now I don't have it in, in my box. I have to go grab it from the other room. But the Guterman silk is more like sewing thread. And that's what I use for the design in here. And then for the end, these tiny designs, because it's really small and thin in here, as well as in the ends right here. So they're all in black on a white background. Most of the time that when this was embroidered, it ended up being a a linen instead of a cotton, but they didn't seem to have that option when I ordered the design. So I went with cotton because it would also be a bit easier to keep clean if I needed to hand wash this. This is something you would not run through your machine because the silk is, can fray a little bit. And I have some edges here, like it's starting to fray, but what is nice when it does do that I have to go back here and do hash marks through this vine yet. It cleans up a lot of that. And to prevent your silk from fraying over time, some of this is because I had it on a smaller hoop too, which causes friction. Use beeswax. This is an entire cake of it. And you basically run your thread through the beeswax before embroidering and it helps hold everything together. And that's more or less just the general idea. As far as stitches go, I'm doing a lot of straight stitches and silk stitches. We're not going with anything overly elaborate here. Cruel embroidery, which is normally a wool, uses a lot more elaborate stitches and they are normally post 1600. With what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to fill in all of the design that you're seeing, kind of like this little leaf down here and these leaves right here. I'm trying to fill in the designs themselves. And with that, I need to use really thin and straight, a lot of straight lines mainly. So with that, I'm just filling in with a lot of satin stitch, some back stitches, and that's really about it. I'm hoping everybody that is out and about in our wonderful little Coztube community here on YouTube is staying safe, staying inside. Um, I myself, I'm, they have me working from home at, at my normal employer. And um, I'm hoping that everyone is able to get through it. And to be honest, the easiest way to get through it is one stitch at a, t at a time, or at least that's how I'm doing it. I would be really happy to hear what you've been doing to keep yourself occupied. As you can tell, this is something that I can probably embroider all the way through our wonderful 
quarantine, I guess would be your best term, quarantine from the outside world. And it'll keep me busy for quite some time. I'm hoping to post a few more bit videos coming up soon. Um, I want to show you my great wheel. I have a few videos on it on my channel from earlier, but I really want to show it to you in a, a much better light. And my living room's a little bit bigger that, that we could do that. Besides this, I've been doing a little bit of weaving, which I'll show you in a later video what that looks like. I'm hoping everybody is well and is staying sane. Not exactly a simple task in, in today's world. If you have any questions about black work embroidery, other kinds of embroidery from the medieval and renaissance period, or even if it's just a general question, please feel free to leave it in the comments or send me a message. And if you enjoyed this, take a look at my other videos. There's some other various different kinds of needlework options that I have on there. I'm hoping to make a intro to dolls video here coming up soon. That, that should be nice as well. Besides all the spinning I was telling you about in my last video, which I'll have to do so I can do more weaving. And if you like and enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.